Hello there Voltage Modular people, Pooh Bear here and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about Volt Ball. We're going to be doing a technical overview and then we'll be doing quite a, a hefty sort of demonstration on how we can actually manipulate the CV signals that actually come out of Volt Ball. The actual device itself is, is very, very straightforward because you just wire, wire yourself up a keyboard. That's going to allow you to control a bat and obviously Anything the balls are doing, i.e. touching the sides or touching the bat or they could be hitting a ship or hitting each other, we can actually generate a CV signal which is going to come out of one of these banks and then we can manipulate it outside of um, Volt Ball to make it give it sound. I mean, that's the whole point of this the device is to bring a little bit of fun into Voltage Modular, but it's for you to design all the sounds that go with it because a game without sounds is extremely extremely boring and sounds really do enhance games there's also another mode within vault ball i refer to it as the uh, g-spot mode and that is really like a, a for genitive so we can actually use vault ball as a genitive so you don't actually have to play the game we can put it into what's referred to this g-spot mode the balls never get lost and we can control how the balls act and then that in turn helps with the sort of signal even though it's quite random which is going on and yeah, as I say, you can use it as a generative side. So let's do the technical overview first and then we will sort of uh, jump into this big sort of demonstration. So at the top, quite straightforward, we've got our pitching gate. This is where you're going to wire your keyboard up to and we use a keyboard input so we can actually move the bat. And I'll, I'll say I'll demonstrate that a little bit later. Start is quite simply, it's going to start the game off. These numbers here along the top of each port, these are offsets. So again, I'm going to get in a lot more detail about Oh, we're gonna, a ball's gonna hit the top of the screen, it's gonna produce a particular voltage and we can actually offset it. And I happen to choose um, pitch voltages, so notes. So I'm gonna to refer to the word as notes from here on out. So that's what I prefer to use. So I'm using notes um, voltages to actually come out of here. We can control that. A little bit further down, we've got these three little test buttons and a test number. So at the end of the day, it might be that, oh, I'm going to hit a ship and I'm going to make an explosion sound. You're not going to want to play the game five minutes and go, oh, I've hit the ship. There's my explosion sound. Oh, I want to make an adjustment and then play another five minutes just so you can hit a ship. So from here, we can actually come along and go, well, the ship is, produces this particular note on this particular bank. So we can change that, hit the button, and it's going to send that signal out as if we're hitting the ship. So it speeds up our sound design process. As I say, that's the real point of this device is to do all the sound design around it. Then when we come down into here, we've got what we refer to as our G-spot. So these uh, buttons are all disabled until you hit G-spot. And then when you hit the G-spot, um, as I say, you can you never lose a ball, so you, <laughs> you sort of you never die, I suppose, effectively, or the game never ends. But from here, we can adjust how many balls are gonna be floating around. We can say, is there a fixed speed or not? When this is set to zero and this actually has it has an effect on the actual game as well so if you decide to play a game you can actually change the speed if it's on zero it means it's more floaty so the ball um, if it hits the bat that will change the speed of it if it hits the ship that can change the speed of it as well um, when the balls collide into each other it changes the speed of things as well and that's really what these buttons here so when we're in g mode we've got c for ball coll collision if we turn it off that means the balls won't collide the same with the bat is it going to collide with the bat S is for ship, is it going to collide with the ship? And this D is for the drag factor. So uh, when we hit a ship in the G mode, it sends the balls off really flying really, really fast. And the drag factor will actually slow them down over time. So everything starts to slow down. So it doesn't go faster and faster and faster. It tries to keep it a bit more under control. And let's say we've got this fixed speed, which will again have uh, be affected by the bat and the ships and, and colliding into each other as well. So you can turn these options off, as say colliding the ball, the bat and the ship, set yourself a bit more of a fixed speed and you can go very, very slow indeed. That way you're gonna find, I'm not gonna use the word rhythmic, but they are, then the balls are gonna move around a lot more orderly fashion. Um, so when you start adding more things, you could say you add in a slightly more and more chaos to the situation. Uh, Question mark, very important one, which we're going to see, and let's just, let's just quick click on it now, because this actually brings up all the different notes. So these, as I say, these are my different notes, 64, 65, 66. Obviously, I can set that to a zero. We can go from zero and upwards. So again, if I come here, these are scrollable, by the way, and that's a scrollable one. So as I'm bringing this down, you can see this, this is the bank number. So now, if I was to hit, the ball was to hit the bat, it's going to send a zero out of this particular port, which is not actually useful at all being a zero volt. 
So you are going to want to start it above. Now, interestingly, I've deliberately start them um, at 64 and above. And in fact, you may want to find um, a good one is, is actually going slightly higher. And the reason you might want to go slightly higher is because if we're getting above this particular sort of note range, we're above 2.5 volts. So we're above 2.5 volts, you're going to find you're going to start triggering gates, whereas at 64, uh, these first few notes are not above that 2.5 volts, so you're not going to trigger a number of things. But with a number of my devices, which I will be using, um, it doesn't matter. Um, and I use 64 for a very particular reason, again, which you'll see why when we get into the real sort of demonstration side of it. The pause button is actually going to pause the game, um, so everything gets frozen in time. And we have a little retro button. So again, well, it's all meant to be for fun, but we've even got this uh, fun fun. So we can uh, actually put it into a, a retro mode um, and off we go. So I think one of the first places we should start is actually give ourselves some pitch and gate data. Uh, so I'm going to wire my keyboard up to here. In fact, I'm not going to actually wire my keyboard up, up. I'm actually going to create some buses. So I'm just going to right click, add to mono bus, and I'm going to create a new bus. And I'm going to put that to three. Because um, as default, I like that on one, I like that on two. I've left that off to the moment because I thought I'd just do some mono stuff today rather than uh, stereo stuff. But I'd highly recommend um, building these sounds in stereo because you could have the ship going from your left speaker over to your right speaker and things like that. So you can actually have things moving around, which would sound uh, quite cool, I think, to be perfectly honest. So, right, so we've got ourselves some bus stuff there. Let's wire these up to the bus. And the main reason I'm doing more buses than anything else, I tend to do it for the IO stuff at the top anyway. But internally, I would also create buses for these. Um, today I won't because obviously you can see the cables happening because you don't want any cables coming across this screen. Um, you know, you're, you're playing a game, you don't want cables coming across, you don't want to be able to see them. Um, so, right from this point of view, uh, our keyboard actually should start working. So here's our keyboard and um, we can control a number of things from our keyboard. So uh, D, as you can see here, it even tells you what's what. Um, I notice there is actually a couple of things missing which I will actually add and I'm probably going to add some of these buttons as well actually on so you can do some key switches from your keyboard so it saves you having to go back to your mouse if you're doing things. Like uh, this is not listed which is, it happens to be the F key which will just pause it. So that actually pauses it. That brings the help on and off, which obviously you can click on there as well. That will actually start it. That will move you back left, that will move you back right, and that would actually release the ball. So um, let's, cl well, let's click, on, click on start, it would be that one. We don't want anything in the way, so let's, let's remove it. So here is the retro style. So using this left and right, we'll move as left and right. If I hit my, say the middle one, so that's the D, it's gonna release the ball, and it happens to release the ball in a really, 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 really horrible way. Now it's going to be really boring. Let's see if we can get it going a bit better. That's it. Um, yes, it does start off very slow and then obviously it gets faster and faster. But look, look, it, let's be honest. I know this is retro mode um, and I'm going to go, oh, it really does. It's just so much more boring when there's no sound. And that's really the whole point of this, this de device is that we go off now and we create some sounds for it. So I think that's what we need to go and do. As you can see, boom, yeah, really boring stuff. And, and obviously every time the ball hits the bat and things, the ball will get faster and faster and faster and boom, it's now obviously lost a life. But, so let's actually go and create some sounds for this and actually have a little bit of fun. Um, there's a number of things you've got to understand really about the the way the notes are working, as I say, because these notes are coming out and how these actually work. They're very, very short indeed. So, um, in fact, it's designed in such a way and I've grouped them into banks in such a way that they can actually happen at the same time. But obviously, like in this one here, we've got start, game over, and title. Well, it's either going to be running them or the balls are colliding. They're both are not happening at the same time. Um, and what happens if, you, if say, oh, that ball collides and that ball collides? Well, you're going to get the same kind of sound coming out of it. So you're getting a sound, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but as I said, I could have designed this so every single um, note actually had its own personal gate but then things would have got rather large and rather messy so i felt like this is a way to go down this kind of route um, but it does mean that outside we've got to manipulate the cv signals um, a lot more to make it do what we want and that's really the next part of this demonstration this is what this is all about really so let's keep it nice and simple to start with so the first thing i'm actually going to go and do is i'm going to actually go and grab uh, one of my cabinets um, and I'm just going to add this nucleus one. And the only reason I'm adding this nucleus one is because obviously then I'm using all the free devices and then you can kind of follow along. But I am going to be using a number of my devices. So um, 
yeah, so you, if you've got the Pooh Bear bundles or treat pots or the, the goodie bag, then you're going to be sorted. So let me just zoom out just a little bit to start with. Here we go. And I have all these um, devices obviously in a particular cabinet and that way obviously I can kind of drag these things out and, and I can go, hey look, I know that you've all got these and I don't have to go searching for them. So first of all, we're gonna be building some sounds. I'm gonna hold down the alt keys to make a copy of some things. So we're gonna need an oscillator to start with. Let's just grab a, an envelope. We won't worry about filters for the moment. We're gonna keep this nice and simple and let's grab that out as well, a little bit of an amplifier. So first things first, let's just go for just for a sine wave to start with, um, I'm going to just assign that to my audio out. So that's going to the audio out. Um, let's have that onto here. We can hit that button and we should get a sound. It's a bit loud. So I'm just going to go up to the very top, he says. I'm just going to pull this down just a little bit. There we go. And I can edit the sound as well afterwards in the video. So that's the sound we've got. So now we want to obviously somehow trigger this from here, as I said. So hey, let's go through some failures to start with. And I'm also actually gonna put this onto a higher pitch as well. There, yeah, that's a bit better. So first of all, uh, the test is at zero. So zero plus 64 is 64. So it's nice and simple. And I'm gonna hit number one. And you can hear, you can't hear anything at all. This is because 64 happens to be below 2.5 volts and this gate information in here needs the minimum of 2.5 volts. So if I just happen to push this up a few, that should be enough, to be honest. You can hear we're hearing a poppy sound. Pop, pop, pop. So why are we only hearing a poppy sound? Well, because the data coming out here is so short, two milliseconds, it just so happens this attack happens to be two milliseconds, that's just a coincidence. But it could be a lot, lot shorter and, and that's how you have to base your facts on. The reason it could be a lot shorter is the ball could hit the bat and say the say it was right over this side, hey, there we go. And, and, and so as soon as it's hit the bat, it's come off and instantly hit the wall. So it's hit the bat and it's hit the wall. So it's done two different things. So it's actually sending out two signals really, really close together. So you just have to sort of bear that thing in mind. However, for this sort of thing, we can actually change it so we can just take the sustain down and remove the release up. So hopefully, there we go, we've got ourselves a bit more of a ping sound. In fact, that's not too bad. If we bring the release down, it's gonna be quite stubby. Yeah, so let's leave that up a little bit so it's a bit of a ring on it. Bing. Hey, that sounds nice. And, well, actually, uh, let's take it off retro mode for the moment and put it into this mode. And let's release the ball. So to release the ball, as I say, I've got to push that, that key on the, the keyboard. There we go. Oh, and it, now it's not all working all the time. So there's a good possibility <laughs> that there, there's, let me stop and pause this or just let myself die. Yeah, so it's the gate information. The gate information is not far and it's that simple. So we could actually push this just up here, this one here, and now it's going to always sound. But it's always going to sound deep. Boom, boom, boom. Right. So what can we do to try and make that sound louder? Well, it's to do with the fact that this data is coming out and it's, it's going high and it's putting the pitch right down. So a sample and hold should do that trick. Um, I'm actually going to go down a totally different route, but I'll actually just let's grab this sample and hold and just shall we try and quickly go down this route and see if we can get this working. And it's going to be a bit of a timing issue, so that's good because we're going to be dealing with some timing stuff, so that might work in our favour. So if I was to put the picture there and the picture there and put that onto external, and then let's use this as the trigger. Um, let's do a quick test. Hey. Bring it down a little bit. So now I'm using my pitch data, and that's why I'm having to bring the octaves down here. In fact, I'm gonna use that one, and I'm gonna one pause it. So now, it's now become a little bit more musical. <laughs> and the reason it's obviously become more musical is because obviously hitting hitting your different walls are producing different notes and hitting different things are actually producing different notes. So, and that's effectively what we're doing. 
Now, obviously, even looking at this particular scenario, we could say, well, okay, we've, we've hit the bat, that should be a pingy kind of sound, a wall's a pingy sound, left wall's a pingy sound, right wall's a pingy sound. Now, this G-spot bottom, well, when we've got the G on, when the ball comes down, it doesn't disappear and you don't die because it just hit the bottom of the, the, the screen and then bounce back up again. So that's what that G spot there is. So you've got to have the G on. But then we've got a ship hit and a ball lost. So during the game, you could hit a ship and the ship gives, does a number of different things. You can have a large bat, a small bat. It gives you another ball. So you get two balls floating around. You get an extra life, slows the ball down, um, speeds the bat speed up and uh, produces five balls at the same time. So you get five balls floating around the screen at the same time that you're playing with. Um, so obviously you need sounds individually for what's happening there. But over here, so we can have a ball lost, which shouldn't be just a ping sound. because That's not quite right. And a ship hit. Well, a ship hit should be like a, a nice kind of explosion sound. So Let's actually try and see how we can then think about how can we split this data out so we can A, hear our pingy sounds and B, have a kind of explosion sound. It's all to do with manipulating the CV signal as it comes out. Yes, there are some compare um, utilities. They're not actually nucleus, but you, obviously out there, there's some free stuff where you're gonna have to work out what your voltage is doing. But there's also a nice simple route as well, he says. I'm just going to quickly bung it up here and under switches I'm going to grab my uh, radage which is a radio switch and here it is let's see if we can squeeze in that little gap there fantastic now what this has this actually has a note mode so we can put it into note mode and by the way uh, radage has had, a, had a, an update very very recently where we had this little question mark on there at the moment if I hover over we get these things come up and if you hold the note down, um, it changes it back to the, the actual note number rather than the actual display sort of note name. But I can now click on this question mark and we don't get that overlay. So it's a lot easier to have a look at the numbers. And guess what? If we go into the high mode, it starts at 64. And that's why I've started these at 64. Now, Radish can work as a multiplexer and demultiplexer, and uh, there's a, one other mode on here which could work quite well for this sort of thing as well. Is if I just click on it, you can see the note numbers now are coming diagonally down. So if I was to, and I'm just going to uh, just unplug this output for the moment and put it into here, so this means 72. In fact, I'm going to bring this back down to 64. Brr, brr, brr. So we're now back onto 64. So when it hits the bat, 64 is gonna go out, and guess what, it's gonna select this button. So I could put something into this signal here, and I could put something into that out there to go and do something. So when it hits the top wall, I can have something different come in here and going out. But what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna put it into the B mode, which is like a demultiplexer, so I'm gonna put the whole of that signal is gonna come into here. When I hit, let's say I'm gonna hit the top wall, 65, I'm gonna hit the top wall. This CV override bit is first of all going to select the button for me automatically. And it just so happens I'm using the same cable which ha happens to have the same value as 65 in it, which will automatically push it out of this port here. So I can then go and do something. I, I might want to obviously change the picture of the oscillator. So for the bat hit, top wall, left and right walls, yes, I do want to use that kind of same sound. So let's actually wire that up very quickly now. And what I'm going to do for that is under switches, I've got my auto sense. So I'm going to quickly grab my auto sense and bring it across over here. And so, as we said, 64, 65, 66, and 67. And I'm actually going to wire up uh, the G spot one. It doesn't matter that we're not using it in that mode, but of course, obviously going forward, I might suddenly say I'm going to switch that on so I can quickly turn that on. That output, ideally, we need to go into this uh, pitch in. And obviously we're using the sampling hole because of what it was doing with the signal. Well, guess what? We've got our own sort of sample and hold within Radage as well. So we can actually use that. Um, and then a bit further down we're here, we've got a, uh, a ship hit and a ball lost. Okay. What I'm going to do first, I'm going to go for the ball lost <laughs> and I'm going to do something uh, a little bit different. 
and I'm going to bring up my one of my favorite devices, which uh, is under favorites. There we go, storing forward. This is quite a powerful little device. This, and I'm just going to quickly give this some input. So I'm wiring this up to my keyboard now, and I'm actually going to put some something in there. So I'm losing a ball, and I want something to happen when I lose a ball, and one nice thing we can do when we lose a ball or something, that's something what I refer to as dark happening. So I'm just gonna play down the scales of my keyboard downwards. There we go, it's a bit boring, but that'll do for the moment. And unfortunately, I think I've just uh, started the game off, didn't I? <laughs> because I hit it, because it's wired up to there as well. So you can see I've actually inputted some stuff in there. So let's uh, put that to an off and that to an off, so when I play my keyboard, I'm not going to change anything in here. So let's quickly bring storing forward over this side. Doo -doo -doo. I'm gonna put it there for the moment. And I'm just gonna scroll this across. So we're gonna put this into a play once mode, which means whenever this output's turned on, it's gonna go through, it's gonna play it, and then it's gonna stop. Um, what I'm going to do with this data, I'm going to probably speed it up. And so let's put that CV out and put that into um, the pitch in. So we're going to need that. And well, we're going to need some gate data as well. And so we've got some gate data. In fact, what I'm going to do with that pitch, I'm going to put it into this auto sense so it shouldn't uh, affect things. So we should actually have some sound, but there wasn't any sound if you noticed. And I think that's because this gate is being held open, maybe. Let's have a quick test. Yeah, there we go. So that's what can happen when we lose a ball. We could even go faster, probably. So when a ball goes off, yeah. So that'll work for that. So obviously we now need to trigger this. Um, and obviously we've removed our gate data from over here. So I need to work out why that was being held open or not being held open shall I say so I might actually use another auto sense and sort that out with using that yeah so the, the gate's not being re-triggered so something's actually being held high so I've got a high signal going on somewhere so I'm not sure where that high signal is coming from so what we're going to do well I'm going to bring up a meter and have a quick look and see what's actually going on that's the only way of working this stuff out sometimes. So let's have a quick meter there. Let's grab a meter and put it onto there and see what it's saying. There we go. It's, oh, it's saying, it's saying minus 3.5 volt. Okay, so it's saying minus 3.5 volts and then when obviously uh, the signal probably coming out here is, uh, oh, that'd be actually five volts. So it's not enough. So that's that's why it's doing that. I understand now. Yeah. So this voltage is dragging this voltage down, even though this should be a trigger voltage. So what are we going to do there? Well, we can just grab our auto sense across. This is what an auto sense can help us sort this out. So we're going to put that one in there. We're going to put that one in there. So then theoretically, this should now. He says work, and it'd help if I put me out into my gate in. <laughs> There we go, I think we're up and running now. So I don't know if you quite followed that. As I said, this is producing minus 3.5 volts. This is producing five volts. And then obviously when you add them together, it's not going over the two and a half volts it needs to produce this. By, by putting it into auto sense, I've now split them voltages. So 3.5 volts going into here, but it's ignoring it now because this is now the live port. And then when this port changes, this will be the live port. So if I come over here and hit this button now, it's now made that the live port. But the problem we've got now, oh, here we go. The problem we've got now really is, um, it's now below the 2.5 volts. So we need to sort that out. And we can sort that out very, very simply, he says. Here we go, do you like this? You're gonna uh, like this word, it's very, very simply with me. And I'm going to go and grab another one of my modules. And the module I'm going to grab is the on trigger change. So I'm going to grab my on trigger change and pull it over. And I'm going to park it in there. And so I'm going to take a feed out of here and out of my auto sense. So when these change, it's going to fire a trigger into here. That trigger 
we're going to come out and let me just come over a little bit more. I'm going to use that to go into this one here to fire the gate off. However, at the moment, it's going to be too short. So we can hear that and you can hear it be too short. So what we can do here is on here is we can actually turn up the length. And this should make it a lot louder. It doesn't matter if you turn that right the way up, it's, it, 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 it won't affect the volume. As long as this is above two milliseconds, you could say. So if you start bringing this below the two milliseconds, it should be a quarter and get quarter and quarter. Why? Because this is a two millisecond attack time. So any, anything above two milliseconds, you're not going to affect the volume any more than you can actually physically hear it. The only difference is, is if you had sustain up, then obviously making that slightly longer. But don't forget, we're only talking the difference between two milliseconds here and 10 milliseconds. So that's, in, in reality, in time, that is absolutely nothing, to be perfectly honest. It's enough to affect our CV signals, but uh, for musical wise, it's not that much. We'd have to worry about that. So this sample and hold here, I'm going to give delete because <coughs> we don't need that anymore. Excuse me for coughing. And so, okay, so now ball loss, that's going to make a sound. Tick, and it'll only actually make a sound. We didn't actually wire it up, did we? So we need to wire this up, and uh, sorry, at the top of my head, I'm just thinking aloud. If that's going to be enough to restart it, I think that should be enough of a signal. And we can test that, because that's going to be number seven. And just in case you're wondering, how do I know it is number seven? Because obviously I say, I've done these in banks of eight. And of course, I'm starting at zero, it'd be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So ball loss. So that's the whole point of this test number. I can test that. So let's go to number six then. So number six, ship hit. We, we want to hit the ship and we want something to happen. And in fact, I'm going to, yeah, let's wire up. Let's do the ship hit. And we've got missed last ball. That's quite a good one. So it's believe it or not, them two sounds, we roll up into one. So we're going to make these two ports here, because that's where they're going to come in on. And when we hold our notes down, we're going to see. It should be 69 and 70, 69 and 70. We're going to roll them two sounds up into one, because hitting the ship, explosion, um, missing the last ball, the last ball, so the ball goes off, and actually, and then explode our bat. So, you know, we need a, an explosion kind of sound. And of course, the, the simple one for an explosion sound. Here we go, we've got ourselves a little bit of noise. Let me just grab that. And so we need a way of obviously managing that noise, which is gonna be very, very similar to what we've actually been doing. So we obviously we're gonna need a bit of a gate. We're gonna need ourselves an amp in the lobe. I might just scroll this way, just nick this one. So I'm gonna hold down my alt key. I use my alt key a lot to do a lot of copies, just in case you didn't know that one. And I'm gonna grab both of these sounds for the moment, he says. Um, we can test and see what it sounds like. In fact, again, let's... Uh... There, that'll do for the moment. Um, I would highly recommend on all of these sounds um, to start really adding, you know, effects really will change them quite big style. In fact, why don't we do it right now? So I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to grab that down into there. And let's bung that into that one there for the moment. Let's see what we do. Hey, not bad. And again, I'm going to turn this one off. I'm going to drag that down into there. And we could test our... <laughs> Yeah, we've got a little bit of a... Maybe this is where I should go back into stereo. It sounds a lot better when you start putting your reverbs and stuff in stereo. But you get the idea that they are actually sounding quite cool. So now we need to trigger this one. And it's, it's virtually going to be the same as what we've, we've done already over here. So um, we, we, we don't really care about the actual signal signal. We just care about we want to signal out and we want to do something with that signal. So if I was to grab this on change trigger, I'm just going to put it over near the noise so it reminds me what it's doing. I'm going to take that gate out and put it into the 
gate in. Um, I'm just thinking we're actually holding the signals high. Uh, we might be okay because of the way the device works, he says. But obviously we need to test that. Yeah, it looks like it might actually work. If I was going to have any issues with that, then I might start splitting it out again into an auto sense um, because we are using this as a bit of a sampling hole. So who knows, demultiplexing, sampling holding and doing some re-triggering and doing some other funny little things. Um, you sometimes then have to reset things, what we're doing with the gates over here, like uh, ignore zero might have to be turned on, something like that, just in case you've got a double explosion. So now, we should have a little bit more of a game playing. So uh, let me just scroll the game over a lot more so you don't see my arm or anything to get an idea. Oh, nice one. You heard the ball, we lost the ball then. Lost another one. them all cool so we've got a number of things going on there and obviously you you saw the balls were colliding into each other um, but you didn't hear anything that's because the balls are down here so there's no reason why uh, we couldn't get ourselves another gadget and in fact let's do actually do that right now because it's gonna be a very simple setup this and we can actually even use their note numbers uh, which has already been set to have the balls colliding because they'll be quite high pitched. So you've got metal on metal. So that, has, that sound actually not too bad at all. So that'd be a simple one to do. So I'm going to grab my radage and I'm actually going to grab my auto sense and my radage, he says. And I'm going to grab my unchanged trigger and I'm going to make a copy of these. Um, where am I going to put them? I'm going to make a copy up here, let's say. Here we go. Uh, now that obviously we want bank B, so we're going to take bank B, we're going to go into here and we're going to click on the note again just so we can see the numbers and well we're starting at 72. Oh look there's 72, happens to be the next bank across. So that this was deliberate, 64, 65, 66 and then jump up to 72. So I've left these all spare just in case I suddenly would I might make some changes to the game, I might add some extra things in so you, you could see some extra things suddenly appear. So we're only interested in the next column over, so again, it's, this is the column, as I said, we're interested in, because that's going to have all the 70 numbers in it, see? So there's the 70 numbers. Um, you can actually have more than five balls, uh, because of the setting over here, but the balls uh, do wrap themselves of, around, so if you had like nine, it's a, one and six will play and two and seven, three and eight and four and nine play. It's, I've, I've sort of done a modular wrap round for them. Um, so what have I got here? One, two, three, four, five. So that's going to be the five balls playing there. Um, that's to there. And let's have a quick scroll over, he says. So... Here's our sounds and here's our, so we want our gate stuff to be sounding. Now, we are starting to stack things up so you could say to yourself, well, we could du duplicate these oscillators, make them slightly different. And I think that's a perfectly good idea. So you could have a ball hitting the wall and a ball hitting the ball at the same time. So you actually yep, hit them here and both at the same time. Whereas at the moment, things are gonna be swapped around a little bit. Um, Where's this pitch coming from? Oh, I was thinking of joining, I need another auto sense, you see. That's not a problem. So what I'm gonna do up here is I'm gonna create myself another auto sense over here. So uh, that's going for the gates. So that's absolutely, oh, I've wired this auto, this auto sense into the gate one, which is not correct because I'm gonna put that one into that auto sense. I'm going to take this pitch to put it into that auto sense and then I'm going to take that out and put that into that there. So that's going to sort out them lot. Brilliant. And I need this gate later. So this is going to create a trigger for this over here. That's what we need, he says. Um, I don't know if we're working or not. 
I suppose the only way of finding out is to come here and say, right, there we go. So, so we're on 64, so I'm playing 70, ball 74 there. And obviously, uh, I can't count, can I? So I need to go one more. <laughs> so eight would be uh, 72. And you may have noticed that this changes here. So when I move this up one and I hit it, it's now firing off that particular button. Then obviously the auto sense is now changing. So you can see it all changing. So now the balls, when we uh, play hit start, there we go. I'll speed this bit up until I get to a, a ship. Then you can see what it's like with all the balls going. So there we go, we could hear it working as the balls go together. I've slowed the balls down a little bit. So I'm gonna quickly now just look at a couple of presets that I've uh, slapped together. Um, Partially because, uh, let's have a quick look at the, well actually no, let's have a look at this 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 one here. This is the one I've, I've actually, uh, you, it's, it's available for you lot to, to download. As you can hear, there's a lot more going on. We've got ourselves like a little start tune and little things like that. Uh, I did, these are free devices, which obviously allow you to have samples. So I made the um, get ready and game over samples and process them already. Um, I didn't realize that when I saved the patch that the files data is not saved within the device. Um, I suppose it's because of the size of it. It doesn't actually do that. I know like with my Jazzy Jukebox now, I actually save all the MIDI data internally. Um, so I have made them files available too, actually up on that Dropbox, just in case you're wondering what them WAV files are. Ideally, the getready.wav should be loaded into the get ready device and the game over.wav should be loaded into the game over device there. There we go, so I'm just gonna enlarge them so you can see what I'm talking about. So yeah, so they can go into there. So we've got all kinds of things going on. We've got all kinds of flip-flop counters going on. Um, we've got one or two things which aren't quite working like the way they should be working. Like at the moment, I can hear a ship going across the top and there shouldn't be a ship going across the top. Uh, that should actually be set to a zero. So something's not reset back so we need to get that sorted um, it's probably because I've just loaded the patch up that's probably what it is anyway so let's have, actually have a listen to see what sort of things we've got going on here then he says as you can hear we've got a little bit of ship noise So on that particular hit of the ship, it actually gave me an extra life. So that's what happened. Oh, I've got a small bat now <laughs> to make it harder. Every time I hit the ball, my bat's gonna get larger and larger until it gets back to its normal size. Depending where you hit the ball on the back, it does depend on the angles as well. Uh, there's other little things like, obviously, the more you die, the slower and the slower the ball will actually go. So we've got ourselves a little bit of end jingle. And we've got some other jingles, but it's, it's basically doing what we were doing before. As you can see, I've, I've done the bank one's five, six, and seven. So here's five, here's six, here's seven. In fact, there's another six somewhere else as well. Here's another six, because don't forget six is quite a long or quite a large bank, should we say. Um, so obviously we've got the game titles. <coughs> Excuse me. So these are actually uh, doing obviously the jingles and things down here. And obviously then that's obviously doing the, the clashing of the balls and if the ship start and the ship stopped. Uh, I think I was having a few little issues, which I've probably got to go and sort out with my timing. So it's not volt ball, it's me outside and the way I'm actually managing my signals. Because what I was trying to be clever there is the ship starting, so I'm trying to kick something off to run. And then obviously the ship could explode. 
Um, so I need to obviously stop that sound from running or it could make it across to the other side. And again, I need to stop them, that sound from running. So it's obviously my logic outside of uh, the vault ball, which isn't quite working, why the ship sometimes sounded and sometimes didn't sound. So I just need to sort that out. I was using my flip-flop counter to try and make it either run or not and redoing this re reset back to zero to try and quieten things down. Uh, yeah, I did release a small change to my flip-flop counter. Um, it's to do with, the, actually, one of them is to do with the, the actual trigger itself. So um, at the moment, if you load it up, you shouldn't see any changes to any of your projects because it defaults into the way your, it was working before, which is a proper trigger mode. So, you know, like I was saying before, there wasn't enough uh, voltage, 2.5 volts to trigger it. This works on the same kind of trigger and it needs 2.5 volts to trigger it. However, if you actually click that button off, um, it now needs anything above zero volts. So for any reason user, that's something we're used to, is above zero volts to do triggering um, and below uh, not to, to, to or usually do the opposite or, or negative voltage to do the opposite. So yeah, that's working in uh, zero and below. <clears throat> It's uh, off and anything above zero now will actually do a trigger. Um, so that's all that is there. Um, so yeah, so that's that particular little patch. And if we go across to our my next patch I sent up there. So this is a genitive one. So let's just zoom in here. And so this is actually going to run on the genitive side of things. Um, Let's just run it and then I'll just talk about uh, one or two things afterwards. Now, the reason why a number of things are actually in time is what I've actually done, and again, if we quickly zoom in here, is I've taken the banks out and really I've been pushing the banks into my storing forwards. And my storing forwards are actually in a live mode. Um, this one's not, this one's actually on a basic repeat with actually no data in it at all. And I'm using this one, I could use this one to control all the others. I happen to be using this one to control with this storing forward down here because I've got the override on. I could override this one as well. And then that means I can just use the swinger and anything I set up here, I can control all the other storing forwards below it. They're having to go and change them. Um, but for demonstration purposes, I decided to say, well, no, I'm going to use this one. It's going to control this one. This one's going to be on its own. So we, I could have a, a separate swing going to it if I wanted to. And the way it's really working is, obviously the balls are doing the clashes, are doing the hits and all the rest of it. And rather than sending it straight out, we put it into the storing forward. And the storing forward is now, and obviously this is set to 16ths, this one up here. So we go set to 16ths. Um, it's now reading through it. So as we're adding data into it, it's reading through it, but it's doing it in, in a proper time. So rather than it now just saying, oh, I've, I've hit something, I've hit something, I've hit something. Yeah, I've hit something, I'm gonna store it, and then I'm gonna release it at a set interval, like these are set down to eight. So these are obviously coming out at eight. So everything, as I say, is coming out um, more on time, more together. So rather than it being just a, a, a big crash of noise and everything coming together, it's things which are actually, it's a, it's a good way of, of uh, let's say, bringing something a bit more rhythmic together. Um, and the final sort of gate and outputs, these are, are actually going off to something a bit more solid, what I refer to solid, so it's going to some gators, which is literally just doing a, a kick. So it's just giving that just a bit of rhythm in the background so we can sort of feel what's going on. Got a lot of um, delays and other things going on as well, and I just happened to, to pick all my different kind of drum sounds. I, I, I saw devices I had, and I thought, oh, well, let's just fire them all off, and I was using that what I used, I've done that video before, and I'm using this to change the sounds around as well. So, but this isn't being fired off that often, but yeah, that's being randomized, and that's because you can see that's just changed. There's another sound come from there. So this is where you can start using it, I say, from a really a genitive sort of side of things, just a, as, a, as a simple bit of fun. Um, and as you can see, we're going quite a bit out of control. That's because this would be, the speed is sort of set to a zero. So things do sort of go a little bit more crazy. It will slow it down a little bit, but it never slows it down that much. 
Whereas if we come here and we just say, hey, well, let's click, you can see straight away the balls are a lot slower. When they hit a ship, a ball will go off a little, a lot faster. And these might have even a chance to catch up with themselves. Like that one's gone way, way ahead. Uh, can we turn off cables? Yeah, so that one's shooting well, well, well ahead of itself. <laughs> But I think you get the idea, that's the whole point of this, is that we could obviously um, use this more as a, a gen generative uh, and a fun bit of device. So I've just taken the G off there, so I'll put it back into game mode um, rather than the G spot mode. I didn't mean to do that, but hey, there we go. So, sorry, we've covered a lot of stuff, and sorry, it got a little bit jumpy towards the end there with things. Um, yeah, because I was just bringing things in and out. So all I can say is thank you for watching, and uh, bye for now.